So if you spend any amount of time on the internet, you've probably received some sort of advertisement for this newfangled fusion night vision monocular. The idea being uh, a fusion between long wave infrared thermal, which is this module right here, and uh, short wave infrared digital, which is gonna be this module right here. And of course, in the front here, we have a lens. Uh, you've probably seen advertisements for this device. Now, the factory that actually makes these, they're a very well-known and highly reputable factory in China. So actually anybody can approach this factory and buy this exact device. Now, uh, this one is a sample from them. I paid $280 for it. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, at least internally, in terms of the hardware, this is exactly the same as what you currently see being sold on the market by other companies. Now, the mold might be a little bit different. The design might be a little bit different. Uh, but in general, uh, I'm reasonably certain that the actual hardware, the actual components that I have in this sample is the exact same that you see elsewhere being sold on the internet. Now, uh, why am I making this video? The reason I'm making this video is because I actually thought this was a rather interesting consumer device. And I genuinely was curious how it would stack up against both conventional sort of thermal devices. Of course, you have, uh, you have products like the Scout TKX from FLIR. And of course, you have a whole array of digital uh, night vision devices, which by most measures is not that good. So I was genuinely curious, what can a 400 or a $450, that's the retail price that some of these companies are asking, thermal night vision monocular do? And I have mixed feelings about this after having used it for about a week. Um, couple of issues I have with this. Number one, the exterior, the overall build quality feels a little DIY. Uh, these modules, for example, they just feel like they've been glued on. The overall shape of the device is a little awkward. You can see glue right here um, along the perimeter of this infrared illuminator. The tolerances on the actual thermal module, for example, are just not as tight as the actual housing. Now the housing is metal. It is reasonably heavy and it feels initially sort of like a high quality product, but not a $400 product. Um, yeah, enough babbling. Let me go ahead. I'll turn it on for you guys. All right. Turning it on is reasonably easy. We'll see. And we are actually by default in, here you go. You can see the adjustable crosshairs. By default, we're actually in the thermal mode. Now, I could put my hand in front of this and you guys can kind of see that it works, but give me one second here and I'll give you uh, a more clear view of what this looks like. All right, here we go. Turn it on. And as you can see, it works. This has a real thermal sensor. Here's my cat. Might not be 100% in focus, but it's pretty close. And yeah, it totally works. If I look around uh, the room, for example, you can see the hot spots. Here's my computer. Um, yeah, it 100% has a real thermal sensor, real bolometer. It totally works. Uh, it does have a couple of different sort of color palettes that you can cycle through. Most of them I haven't found to be particularly useful. Uh, about two of them are, are what, I, what I like to use. And yeah, as far as the thermal capabilities of the device go, that is basically it. Uh, one thing to note right off the bat is if you are in the standard observation mode, uh, there is no zoom. This is effectively a wide angle lens, at least by monocular standards. But as soon as you switch over to thermal, you'll notice it's quite a bit more zoomed in. And if we take a look at the near infrared digital mode, you can see it works pretty well, but we actually uh, maintain that wide field of view. So that zoomed in functionality seems to be exclusive for the most part uh, to the thermal mode. Uh, anyways, you can see the illuminator uh, and the beam profile. You got this hot spot in the middle. Uh, no noticeable lag or delay. The resolution looks pretty nice, to be honest. You can clearly read the text on my jacket there. Uh, yeah, no complaints about the digital mode. Works pretty well. Now, as far as the rest of the device goes, here is what I'm going to say about it. 
If you've never used Thermal before, it's impressive. Uh, there is definitely this noticeable novelty wow factor to the first time using it. You can really have fun screwing around for the first couple of hours. But over time, you notice more and more of the flaws. Uh, the DIY style build quality on this, uh, clearly it's meant to uh, be pew pew stick mountable. It does have adjustable crosshairs, but uh, I can promise you this thing is not going to survive a single shot. Uh, the, the, the shock or the recoil is going to destroy this. That is my prediction. Um, other than that, yeah, it just doesn't feel necessarily worth the money. Like I said, try not to get sort of sucked in by the novelty of the thermal, which is cool, but there are other thermal devices on the market. Um, and some of them are even available at this price point or less. Uh, so with that being said, um, be skeptical of this product. The overall design, the overall architecture is okay. As a consumer product, it's mildly refined. It does work. Uh, for most people, it probably works well enough to not uh, return it. But in general, I think your money can go further in other ways if you're just a little bit smarter about it. A uh, few other things to note. Battery life is not the best. Manually focusing lens. And uh, yeah, have a nice day.